Greetings, folks. Kinematics. A slightly complex problem. Buckle up. This is going to be fun. So we have two cars that are moving in the opposite direction. Clock starts at t equal to zero when the two cars are 1,600 meters apart. Car A is moving to the right with constant velocity 10 meters per second. Car B is moving to the left with an initial magnitude of 25 meters per second, but slowing at a rate of 0.25 meters per second per second. Relative to car A's position at t equal to zero, where do they pass? And how fast was car B moving when they passed? These are classic kinematics problems. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and pause the video. There's a protocol to dealing with problems like this if you want to approach them in an orderly way. I want you to take a look at uh, part A. Um, see if you can't see what the protocol would be. Think your way through it and then actually try to execute it and see if you come up with an answer. And then once you've done that then come back to the video. So go ahead and pause and give it a shot. Okay, so if you're hearing my voice, I assume you're back, so let us proceed. We start with a sketch. We put in a coordinate axis, we identify parameters that are important, and we do this for both problems on the same coordinate axis, because there are two problems here, two different cars driving independently of one another. So here's our axis, here's our origin. 1600 meters is important because that's where car B is at t equal to zero. I'm identifying that as x2. I'm interested in where the cars pass, so I'm going to identify a coordinate as x pass. Car A at t equal to zero, moving to the right through the origin, has velocity 10 meters per second, and acceleration zero. Car B is moving to the left, passing through x equal to 1600 meters at t equal to zero, moving at minus 25 meters per second, minus because it's moving in the negative x direction. As for acceleration, that's a bit tricky. If car B had been speeding up, the direction of its acceleration and velocity would have been in the same direction. That's how something speeds up. In that case, the sign of the acceleration would have been negative, as that's the sign of the velocity. In our case, car B was slowing down. That meant that the direction of the acceleration and the velocity had to be opposite one another which meant that the sign of the acceleration had to be opposite the sign of the velocity, or positive. Understanding the relationship between acceleration and velocity directions, and whether an object is speeding up or slowing down, is something that you need under your belt. If this doesn't make sense, you need to ask about it in class. So what you've done is to lay out a pictorial view of what's going on at t equal to zero. You don't have to keep all this information in your head while you approach the problem. It's all just sitting there on the page staring at you. Okay, this is the reasonable way, the easy way, to go about attacking a problem like this. Kindly notice that there are some minor notational disparities that you should be aware of. For instance, x1. What is x1 actually saying? It's identifying a specific coordinate on the axis. V1 is not telling you what the velocity of this car was when it was at x1. And you can tell that that's the case because V1 over here is not associated with the velocity of car B when it's at x1. So what does the subscript sub 1 mean when you're talking about velocities here? Well, 
what it's talking about is the velocity at point in time one, which is to say at the beginning of the time interval between when the car was here and when the car was here. So the way this would be read, if you were doing it completely, you would be saying the velocity at point in time one associated with car A is equal to 10 meters per second. Okay? Which is to say this subscript is a different critter than this subscript. This is minutia, but it's important minutia. So moving on. So here are your kinematic equations. What do they do for you? This first one says that if you have a time interval and you'd like to know what the velocity is at the end of the time interval at time t2, you take the velocity at the beginning of the interval and you add to it how the velocity changed over the interval due to the fact that there was acceleration. This relationship allows you to figure out what the position of the body was at the end of the interval. By taking the position at the beginning of the interval, adding how the position changed due to the fact that there was an initial velocity, and adding to that how the position changed due to the fact that there was an acceleration over the interval. And this relationship just rearranges parameters to give you a third equation. So moving on. What's going on with car A? Well, assuming that the time that it takes for car A to go from the origin out to the pass point is delta t, and assuming that the initial time is when the stopwatch starts, which is at t equal to zero, we can write that delta t is simply equal to t. So the question arises, what kinematic equation do we have that's going to end up having time in it, coordinates, initial and final, an initial velocity, and an acceleration? And the answer to that question is this little gem. If you didn't have numbers to work with, which is going to be the case most of the time, you have to deal with variables. So this is asking for the final position. Final position according to the way you define it is x pass. So you put in x pass for x2. Initial position was defined as 0. The initial velocity was defined as v1 sub a. So you put in v1 sub a for the initial velocity initial acceleration, or I should just say the acceleration because it's constant over the interval, is just zero. In the case of this problem though, you do have numbers. You know that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second, which you can put in and you come up with this relationship. Please note though that this is a coordinate, this is a single number. This t is denoting a time interval. This is minutia, but it's minutia that you ought to keep in the back of your head. For car B over the same time interval, same relationship is going to end up working for us. Final position is x pass. But we run into kind of an oddity with the initial position. The initial position was what I have called on the coordinate axis x2. So you have this strangeness in the generic relationship. You've got an x1 when you actually put in the variables from your coordinate axis, you find an x2 in that spot. Once again, you need to know what the generic relationships, what those parameters are actually denoting so that you can take from your coordinate axis the appropriate coordinates and velocities and accelerations, etc., and actually put them into the appropriate bailiwicks. And putting in our numbers, initial position is 1600, initial velocity is minus 25 meters per second, constant acceleration is plus 0.25 meters per second per second. Here is our final relationship. Writing everything out. We can equate the x passes to come up with this relationship, and from that, we can solve for the times. Turns out there are two of them. 
This time is the amount of time it would take car B to pass car A, come to a stop, and then end up accelerating back toward car A, finally catching it. We're not interested in that time. We're interested in the amount of time it takes for car B to initially pass car A. With that information, we can determine what X pass is. Second part of the problem was to figure out how fast car B was moving as the two cars passed. As always, you're looking for a kinematic equation that has what you know and what you're trying to figure out. You actually have two options in this case. This is one of them right here. You just figured out the time interval. You know the acceleration of car B and its initial velocity. From that, you can figure out what its velocity is at the pass point. Putting in the numbers and doing all of that, we get a velocity at the pass point for car B of minus 10.6 meters per second. Negative sign makes sense because the vehicle would be going in the, toward the left. Another possibility is a relationship that doesn't have time in it, which would be this relationship right here. Um, you know what the initial and the final positions would be. You know the acceleration and you know the initial velocity. From that, you could figure out what the velocity at the pass point was for vehicle B. Putting those numbers in, you would come up with plus or minus 10.6 meters per second. The plus or minus because you had to take a square root here, which means you'd have to manually determine which, what the sign was. It's the only downside of using this particular relationship. In any case, that's the problem. So this wasn't such a horrible problem. And if you're good at this kind of thing, you may have been able to see what was needed to be done in your head. But if that isn't you, having an approach to deal with problems is kind of nice. When things get truly complicated, you need to be orderly. For kinematic problems, decide on an origin. Set up a coordinate axis. Notice if you have two independent problems happening at the same time. Identify relevant parameters and stick them on the coordinate axis for easy viewing. Then go hunting for the appropriate kinematic equations. The more orderly you are, the better chance you have of succeeding. All it takes is patience. And that is all I have to say on the matter.